One solution to an IRS problem is a status called currently not collectible or hardship status. There's another term for it, it's called status 53 or sometimes just 53 for short. That's internal IRS lingo for currently not collectible. Sometimes it can be to your advantage to use that uh, lingo, the status 53 or just 53. Sometimes it can be to your advantage to use that because it makes the IRS employee think that you know a little bit more than you actually do about the case. So how can currently not collectible actually be a solution to an IRS problem? In order to understand that fully, you really need to review, or we need to review, the collection statute of limitations. The IRS only has 10 years from the date of the assessment of the tax to collect it. So if you are able to stay in currently not collectible status, a status in which the IRS admits that they have no ability to collect from you because you have no ability to pay, if you can stay in that status for the duration of that 10 years, then you win, they lose. So let's think about it. Do most people have 10 years left on the collection statute? No, not really. Most people file a tax return on time or sort of roughly on time within a few years of being on time. And then some time goes by before the IRS ever makes really any attempt to collect it. And so in some cases, uh, particularly for older taxpayers who are now living on a fixed income, currently not collectible can be a fantastic solution because maybe there's just a few short years before the collection statute of limitations actually expire. So how does the IRS decide to place you in currently not collectible status? Well, there's a couple different ways, or actually there's one way with a couple different forms. The forms are the 433F or the 433A. The 433F is a form that the IRS uses when you call them on the phone, typically. And when you're dealing with something called the Automated Collection System, or ACS, these are lower level collection employees at the IRS and they have sometimes the ability to place your, your account into currently not collectible status. They're gonna go ahead and go over things on the 433F like your monthly, uh, your monthly income and your monthly allowable expenses. Keyword in that sentence was allowable. You see, the IRS has tables for every county in the country and we have allowable expenses for things like housing, transportation, uh, utilities, and things like that. So if your allowable expenses and your monthly uh, disposable income work out to where you have a negative income or an exceptionally small monthly income, then they'll go ahead and place your, your account into currently not collectible status. The other form that I referenced was the form 433A. Now the form 433A is typically used when you're gonna do an offer and compromise or when you have a revenue officer involved in your case. So what's a revenue officer? A revenue officer is an employee uh, at the IRS tasked with collecting income, or sorry, tasked with collecting money from taxpayers with slightly more complicated situations or higher balances. They tend to go after self-employed people uh, and, th and people that aren't just wage earners or sometimes wage earners with you know high, six, fi high five figures or high six figure liabilities. So a revenue officer will use a 433A and it's the same calculation basically that you use on a 433F. They go ahead and look at your monthly revenue, your monthly income, and they look at your monthly disposable income. If you can convince them that you have a negative or exceptionally small ability to pay on a monthly basis, they'll place you into currently not collectible. Now it's important to note that there's two different ways or two different durations for currently not collectible. It can last forever or until the statute expires, or sometimes just for a short period of time. And the IRS doesn't typically tell you which of these two uh, durations are gonna apply in your case. And so it's kind of a hit or miss situation. I would say that typically, if you are living on a fixed income, this is a semi-permanent situation where they're gonna go ahead and put an income target, say, I don't know, $40,000 a year or something. And if your returns, or your income doesn't exceed $40,000 a year, and that's a totally hypothetical number I just made up. But if your income doesn't exceed this target, then they're not gonna go ahead and yank you out of currently not collectible. And so the collection statute very well could expire. The other is where they're just gonna put you into currently not collectible for a short period of time, usually a year or two, and then they're gonna go ahead and do a review to see if you have an ability to pay in the future. So sometimes this can be a stopgap measure uh, just because it's better not to pay sometimes than, than it is to pay, or sometimes it can get you to uh, the end of the collection statute of limitations, or sometimes it can get you to the point where you can actually file a bankruptcy. If you want to hear more about how it would apply to bankruptcy, go ahead and check out some of the other videos at GetIRSHelpNow.com and you can see more about how bankruptcy can apply in an income tax situation. Give us a call at 888-438-6474 or again, visit the website at GetIRSHelpNow.com.